Yo, I'm pulling up to this landscape quote right now, but I've got to get this message out. So, what is integrity? Your word is your worth. Sorry, let me turn this down. Your word is your worth, your worth is your word. You do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it, whether you feel like it or not. That's the definition of integrity is when your words and your actions line up, right? Let me pull over. I'm just on a side street. Okay, so what's up? It's Keith Kelfus. I'm out doing Saturday quotes. Every single Saturday, I line up a bunch of landscape quotes and property walks and then knock down as many as I can. So I'm racing from you know property to property to property, meeting with clients and um, I used to shake their hand, but now I don't keep my distance. But so in your first year or two of being a contractor, being self-employed, being your own boss, you can be in situations where you're still growing and, and investing in your business. Maybe you're paying off debts. Maybe you are pulling yourself out of a hole and you're trying to get it together. And when you need money or you're in neediness in the world of um, commerce, business, transaction, as a contractor, you can be tempted to do things that make you money that maybe you're not qualified to do, or maybe you will, um, what's the word? Do things that aren't a good fit and you justify it because you need money so bad right now that you'll do whatever you gotta do to get it. And those type of thoughts and those type of actions, and I'm not saying being a liar, I'm not saying being a thief, but contractors sometimes have a bad rap for not having integrity. Like for collecting um, the final check and then the customer comes out and find out that the, the, the contractor cut a corner or shorted materials or didn't do a good of a job as they said they did. And the contractor's running around with his fingers crossed doing half-ass work. Um, or not a hundred percent satisfactory work and most of the time contractors get away with it in the world that we live in that's just it's kind of the nature of the beast now you have an opportunity to set yourself apart and literally be in the top five percent of small business owners and landscapers and a home service business provider by just having that extra amount of integrity now if you're new in the business and you aren't charging the right prices to afford you to slow down just a little bit and do an outstanding job and cross every T and dot every I and make sure that you, you're doing everything to the best of your ability, well, uh, then it's kind of like you, in, in some ways in the world, I'm not saying morally, but in, in the world of business, it's almost justified if you have cheaper prices. It's a, like an implied agreement that if you have really cheap prices that you can't do the best possible work and you can't cross every T and dot every I because you got to move. You got to get to the next property and the customers understand that, but it's an unspoken thing. But that means that's by no means should you ever uh, tell a customer you're going to do something outstanding. And even if you do it underpriced, you can't afford, you simply cannot afford to do beautiful work. And at some point, I, my integrity, I felt like was breaking because I was so frustrated on customers' properties and I always did a phenomenal job no matter what, even though I wasn't charging enough and I was going crazy inside being like just ripped apart because I felt like I was killing myself coming home to a, you know, a one bedroom apartment and struggling to pay my bills. Yet I'm going on these half a million dollar properties and working my tail off and I'm not getting rewarded for it. And there was a point where I got upset and I started reducing quality just a little bit. And uh, my friend Joshua Latimer calls this. Now, he didn't talk about any of the stuff I just talked about. Those are my words. But he said something interesting. He calls it the technical perfection deception. And that's where you deceive yourself and thinking that um, everything has to be technically perfect in order for your customers to be happy and it doesn't because I tell you most of the time customers value you being on time you doing what you say you're gonna do and showing up is 90% of success just showing up consistently on time and doing a good job 
will get you so much farther than running around like a basket case doing perfect work, you know. So there's a line, and you learn these lines as you 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 grow and develop, right? But the whole underlying theme of what I'm saying right now is, sorry, I'm running on like three hours of sleep. I'm very busy. Which I like that. It's like uh, the, the stress and the pressure like makes you a straight up warrior. My phone's ringing. Um, and I suffer from ADD, if you haven't figured that out. And that's why some of you guys watch my channel. You're like, I love Cowfish. He's ADD just like me. If he can do it, I can definitely do it. Right. Um, but dude, I have so, such a long, a long way to go. There's, there's total areas of, that I'm just banging my head up against the wall over and over and over, and I can't wrap my head around. And we all have our own struggles and challenges, right? But anyways, the underlying theme of what I'm talking about is you should never sacrifice your customer's trust or break your integrity for money. I have over 150 positive five-star reviews from Google to Facebook to Yelp to uh, all, the, all the stuff. And a lot of the new customers that I get, they say it's because I have so many positive reviews. And when you read all of my reviews, they're all saying good things about Keith showing up on time and doing what he says he's going to do and doing a beautiful job. I've got a couple negative reviews. Uh, one of them, I deserved it. And another one, just some random stuff. I went on YouTube one star and I found Keith was has a YouTube channel and he was telling other contractors that they should raise their prices and that um, he, he's taking advantage something like that and then somebody else complained has left me a one-star review because we do window cleaning and uh, uh, well, they're upset because I discontinued cleaning out the window tracks because I just can't stand doing it and I used to do it and now they're upset and then another person left a negative review saying he won't clean the tracks like, okay, so like out of 150 reviews, but it's those couple negative reviews that you don't forget. They burn in your mind. They crush you because you try so hard to be a good person, right? But I think that at the end of the day, if you've done what you said you're going to do and you come with clean hands and you leave with clean hands and you operate in integrity, it's going to get you a lot farther down the road and your business will blossom and it might take a little bit longer but don't take any shortcuts and a day will come where your phone's just ringing off the hook and you don't have to worry about money anymore it's like um, in the way that you used to and it's like you got all these people calling you trying to give you money and now you're into a new position because this is positioning it's it's a, it's a marketing term for you're positioning yourself as somebody who is higher value you've moved upstream and now you can pick the people you want to work with based off of what makes sense for you and your business and what your gut tells you is right because now you have moved to a place of integrity that is higher and upstream that you choose to only work with customers who who match that or exceed that and so I like challenges. I like customers who have high expectations and that are very clear about what they want. And I try to veer away from customers who aren't clear and who maybe have, well, yeah, I can smell that they'll play the victim card or maybe they're just paranoid. Like paranoia is a very, very dangerous thing. When people are paranoid, you should just run. When you're paranoid, customers it, it rubs off on this and I was like thinking about this I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning and I was thinking about that oh my god in the first year of my business especially first couple years I was always scared and paranoid <laughs> over over like like money and bills and, and neediness that no wonder no wonder your energy you bring that on around your customers they can hear it on the phone right and so are you responsible for the energy that you bring and in, in, in what you're creating? You're generating that, right? So I'm about to walk up to a property right now. I got to go, uh, but I'm doing a quote. But as soon as I get there, I don't talk very much when I'm 
with clients like I do here because I'm on a video I, mean, I can't just not say anything but most of it is I'm quiet present relaxed and listening to them and then asking a whole lot of qualifying questions hmm and it seemed to really work out the, the books about you know increasing your closing rate and sales stuff like Grant Cardone and uh, that's all really really good stuff but I think nothing 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 compares to cold hard experience of boots on the ground that's bog boots on the ground and being in the trenches and being out there actually doing it and, and I'm so grateful that there was a silver lining when the times it seems so hard that it eventually starts to come together and everything starts to come together and now that's when you can take the mountain bike and go from first gear to second gear and now you're in third gear huh? now you're pedaling the same speed as you were before but you're going twice as fast oh, I should stop pedaling so damn fast